All right, so now that we have Python 3.6 installed, we can verify it by typing out the command to execute Python, which of course is just this command, Python 3.6, and then dash capital V, that gives us that version. Now, of course, if you're on Windows, you're probably well aware, this is what you're gonna have to type out, something very similar to this, uh, but it should give you the same sort of version. And of course, if you also type in Python 3.6, you should actually be in the Python shell, the Python interpreter here, uh, which of course, is where we should all be now. If you aren't here, then definitely go back and watch the setup process. Now, since we are here, I can absolutely create a virtual environment for Python 3.6 and then install Django and start a Django project. That's actually what we wanna do here now. So what I'm gonna do is navigate into my dev folder and I'm gonna make a directory called try-django and I'm gonna cd into try-django. And I'm gonna clear out here and then I'll just list everything out. Uh, DIR if you're on a Windows or PWD if you're on Mac to see exactly where you are. Okay, so now that we're in this folder, I'm gonna go ahead and create a virtual environment. Now, if you haven't done this before, well, then you're really not listening to me. So hopefully you've done this before and we just type out the executable for Python 3.6 and then we'll do dash M as in dash module, V-E-N-V -E period, and is gonna create that virtual environment. Now we are gonna do this a lot as a beginner of creating virtual environments because it's critical to know how to do it to isolate our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and do source bin slash activate to activate my virtual environment. And of course, if you're on Windows, it's dot slash script slash activate like that. I'm on, I'm on Mac, so you know those slight changes I already talked about to you Windows users. Okay, so now we need to use a package called pip. But the question is, how do we know what package it is that we're trying to install? Now, of course, we're using Django, so it's pip install Django, and that's the command. That's what we'll use most of the time. But the thing is, I don't wanna just go off of this command without really knowing what pip is and where I can find other kinds of packages. So this brings me to pypy.org. Now, pypi.org is a place to find, install, and you know, Python packages. This is third party code. So if you think of Python code as something you can write, so kind of like a book, if you wrote a book in English or any other language, where would that book live? Perhaps it would live at the library. So I think of this Py Python package index as a big library of third party packages that people can publish and you can do it as well. And I have a whole series on how to do it. Uh, so in here we can search for Django. So of course, there are gonna be a lot of things related to Django. These are those third-party packages that I was mentioning. And if you see something like, hey, this one is from 2018, so there's a chance that this hasn't been updated in a long time, but it still could potentially work for your project. I'm not gonna cover that right now, but do keep in mind that there are still valid old packages. They just might be for older versions of Django. So if you wanna test them out, you totally can in a way that I'm gonna show you in just a moment. So as we see, the very top one is Django 3.2.5. So this of course is one way to find the actual way to install Django, right? This is actually the way I do not recommend. Instead, what I recommend is going to djangoproject.com and then going into download and going for the LTS release, the long-term support release. That's why we're doing Django 3.2 is because it's the LTS. This is gonna be supported as you'll see in the Django documentation, it's gonna be supported well into 2024. So that means that you can use the LTS in production, securely in production with bug fixes, with all the great stuff that Django has until 2024. And at that time, you'll probably upgrade to 4.2. These smaller or more minor versions aren't as big of a deal as the LTS. These are the ones I always recommend to use. Although there are those of you out there who love the newest version, so you're gonna to wanna to switch to the newest version all the time, which is fine, you could totally do that. But in this series, I do recommend that you stick with me on 3.2 and the LTS version. And that's always my rule of thumb, is like if you're watching a video or you're looking through a book that's using a different version of Django, just stick with that version because Django is Django. It does change over time but it's not so drastic that it's impossible to learn Django. Uh, but these little, bug, these little bugs that occur because you're a beginner, or even if you aren't a beginner in Python, those little bugs just get really annoying when you uh, want to use a different version that 
than that's in the video or that's in the book. So that's a long winded way to say, let's go ahead and install Django now. So pip install. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use quotes here and I'm gonna do Django greater than or equal to 3.2 comma less than 3.3. And if I hit enter, what this is gonna do is it's going to install the latest version of 3.2 that's less than 3.3 or that next version number. Now, if we look back in the documentation, there is gonna be no 3.3, but this isn't so much for Django specifically, but it's for PIP. So this is how we can actually install a version that's between two versions. And the version you'll get might be different than the version I have on screen, but it will have the latest bug fixes, which I think is important. So you will have 3.2. Those are the numbers that are important, not the last number, uh, unless you have bug fixes that have to occur. So you might be seeing 3.2.10 by the time you're watching this. Uh, it really depends. So again, that command is this right here. Okay. So you can do this with any Python package. So any pick, pip package you need, this is a really clean and easy way to get a version that's in between major release versions. Now, of course, you can do another thing, and that is installing a specific version, which is like this, and using the double equals there, and that will actually give you that specific version, which I think is cool as well. So if you had a case where you needed a very specific version, this will do that. Now, in my case, you may have noticed that it installed several other things that are related to Django. Now, we don't actually have to install those. Pip did that for us. That's a really cool thing about PIP and also a really cool thing about virtual environments, right? So in here, I've got Python version is 3.6.8. Now, if I opened up a new terminal window or PowerShell, depending on what you're on, and if I did PIP freeze, I may or may not see that same version of Django. Now, in this case, I actually do have that same version of Django installed, but I also have other things installed. This is that isolation I keep talking about. It's not actually fully isolated from your system, but it is isolated from these packages, right? So if I didn't have these packages in here, I wouldn't have them in here and vice versa, right? So we can actually separate those packages out and they are specific to that version of Python that you're using inside of your virtual environment, which I think is pretty cool too. Now, now that we've got this, we've got Django installed, we have Python installed, we have a virtual environment, it's time to actually create a Django project. So one of the things that you might wanna do is actually type out python-m and then something like Django, right? So what this is, this is a Django management command. So notice that I can actually call it with just python-m Django. Now, Windows users, you're probably gonna find this incredibly useful because now I can actually do all sorts of commands. Now, Mac and Linux users, you'll probably see that Django-admin most likely will work and it will most likely give you the exact same commands at least it should give you the same commands because these are both of the command line interface or you know CLI for Django. That's essentially what's happening here. Now, this isn't the only way we're gonna work with our projects as you'll see, but the point is we needed to know how do we actually start a Django project? And there's a command inside of the Django CLI to actually start that project. So I'm gonna do it that works for everybody, which is Python-M Django and then start project and then try Django or the name of the project, whatever we want to name it is what we're gonna put here. And then the directory we wanna put it in, right? So if I leave no period, it's going to just put it into a new directory. If I put a period there, it's gonna put it within the current directory. I'm gonna do both things so you can see it. So first off, try Django, I put a period at the end and then I'm gonna go ahead and do try Django, not this one or whatever and Oops, I put a period at the end again. Notice it gives me an error. This is great. Django's command line interface is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here. Now it created something else. We'll take a look at that in a moment. I'm also gonna go ahead and use the Django-admin and start project and delete me, hit enter. Okay, so in theory, I just created three projects. I did four commands for those three projects, but only three of them were successful. The very first one, the one we'll well, we might use, we'll see. Uh, the second one was not successful, the third one, and then the fourth one. Okay, so if I open up this folder, uh, open period is what you'll use on Mac. If you're on Windows, you'll use II period. 
it will also open up that folder in the file explorer for your Windows users. So what we see here is several things, okay? So we've got virtual environment stuff. We also have a folder called TryDjango. We have a file called manage.py. We also have this uh, TryDjango, not this one. Notice there's manage.py or manage.py in there as well. And then there's also another one called delete me, also with manage.py, okay? Cool, not groundbreaking, not at all. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete that whole thing. Oh no. Well, um, that is because I wanna do that all over again from the top. So we're gonna CD into dev. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a directory called try just Django. We're gonna CD into try just Django. Do you remember what we do here? Now that we've created a brand new folder, what is it that we need to do? Hopefully you remember Python 3.6, we create a virtual environment and we're gonna create it inside of this directory. So we use a period there and that will take a moment. I'll go ahead and activate that virtual environment. And then we're gonna go ahead and do pip install, double quotes, Django greater than or equals to 3.2 comma less than 3.3 or 4.0. Doesn't really matter as far as that second number, just so that it's greater than 3.2. And so that's gonna take a moment to install all of the related packages. Once we've got that, we can actually do pip freeze and we can see the things that are installed. Uh, you can also do the optional upgrade of pip. That's completely up to you at this point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create that Django project, the one that we might use. I might also redo it again because this is something you should be very comfortable with as a new Django developer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do python-m Django start project and try Django. And then I'm gonna do period because I want it in this current directory. Now I'm actually not gonna hit enter just yet. You totally can, that's okay. But if I list everything out in here, I see only virtual environment stuff. Um, that's important, right? You only want to see virtual environment stuff. So now I'll actually run this command and we will see all of the new things related to Django, which really is just managed up high and this other folder called try Django. So this is the project configuration folder. We'll go over all of those things as we start to build more of this out. Uh, but that's just the general idea. So we have managed up high and try Django. Now, if we actually type out Python managed up high, we will see very similar commands that we saw before. They're actually a bit different because we now actually have a Django project. So it does have some overlap commands, but it's not the same commands, um, right? So we can go up and actually take a look at that with python-m Django, hit enter. Uh, now notice that it has this warning of installed apps, Django settings module, what's going on. Uh, and then it only has the Django subcommands, right? So it didn't have all of them. Now, do you need to know all this stuff just yet? Probably not. Is it a little overwhelming? Maybe. But the thing is, we're gonna go through all of this. We're gonna figure this all out together. So you just gotta stick with me. You just gotta trust me that I'm gonna take you through this and, and make it nice and easy to really grasp all the things that are going on. Now, these commands are not something you want to remember. The things that you wanna remember is what I just reiterated was creating a virtual environment, installing Django, and then running this start project thing. Those are the things that you're gonna to want to remember. Now, at some point, the pip freeze, this installation right here, we're gonna to wanna to make reference to that. So I'm actually gonna do it now, just so you're aware of it. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and do it again another time. So I'm gonna use this command called echo. I'm gonna paste in that. And then I'm gonna use the greater than sign. And I'm gonna put this into requirements.txt. Now, if you're on Windows, I do not believe that Echo works in this manner. It might, you can give it a shot. But the idea is we wanna give a line of requirements.txt. We hit enter and all of that did was it just copied this command into requirements.txt. Another way to think about doing this is doing pip freeze and then that greater than sign and requirements.txt. That way, that's another way to do it. And that's just putting all of the requirements into requirements.txt because we want that reference, okay? Um, now, this is not incredibly important right at this moment, but it will be important in the future and I will come back to it at the future. So if we do cat requirements.txt, I can also see those same requirements. 
So cat is just echoing what's inside of requirements.txt. And if I open this up again, so I, I period, or if you're on Windows, and if you're on Windows, you might have to open up Notepad or wait until we actually get VS Code going uh, and you can actually see those version requirements again. And so the final thing to think about here is we can actually do pip install dash r requirements.txt and that will actually install all of those requirements again, um, but it's now actually referencing them, you know, so we can use it again in the future, right? So we don't actually have to remember exactly everything about this project, every version that we might ever use. We just need to remember some of them and add them to a file called requirements.txt, which is incredibly common for a virtual environment. And it is a best practice to call it requirements.txt. Cool. So let's go ahead and keep going. And now what we want to do is actually set up our text editor, the actual code editor that we'll use to do all of the things that we've been doing. <laughs>